the curriculum refresh has been boring into my brain. Um, but sitting there, distracting me from everything. So finally, I've got into it. So come and join me. It's not that bad. Okay, so full confession. It's May 2024. And I am only just, I've had a couple of little looks at the curriculum refresh, but I haven't really delved into it. So I'm only just doing it now. Had an epiphany yesterday. I really need to get this sorted because I can't concentrate on everything because it's in the back of my head overwhelming me. Um, so here is what I have done. It's where I find everything. And it's also how I process the information. Um, linked below you will find a document, the document that I work on in this video. It, please note it is just my interpretation, it's my way of understanding things but it might give you a bit of an um, inroad, a starting point, um, a way forward. And the other thing is apologies for the quality of this video, my mic's dead and I'm videoing my screen and so it's faceless and the sound is rubbish. But anyway, you get the idea. See you soon. Okay, so we are concentrating on the curriculum refresh today. So I created this page a long time ago, admittedly for me, because I could never keep up with and find all the different links. So this is, um, if you just click on handy links up here on the Drive Resources website, this is available for you as well. Um, so here's the NCEA stuff, literacy, co-requisites, English language, unit standards, blah, 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 and other important stuff. Here is the New Zealand Curriculum Refresh link. So you can click on that, and then you can scroll down to Te Mātai Aho. Click, scroll down again, and get to English and there we have English so I'm just going to get out of that for a minute if you want to fast track so that was that original curriculum refresh site that I took you to here is just a quick fast track link to the English learning area so you don't have to do that scrolling down and clicking so here it is here the refreshed English learning area and here is our download that we're going to look at in a minute I will just take you back here for a second and just alert you to this if you are if you are completely confused like I was and I still am unless I'm using it all the time there's a map of key sites here so you can click on that and it's just a PDF download with clickable links and screenshots it could be good to print out and stick on your resource room wall just so that you have a visual understanding of where everything is so let's scroll down again and Go straight to our English curriculum learning area and then download this document. Download, download, and here it is here. Now, this, these, these are the big ideas that you see in that matrix, right? You know, our, our English matrix. So again, if you're not sure how to find that English matrix, just go up here. And it's in our English learning area. So you can click on anything on here that's white as clickable. English learning. And doo -doo -doo -doo. there is our English learning matrix there. And you will see our big ideas are along here. Language and literature gives insights into ourselves and others. Stories of Aotearoa, joy and nourishment, communication, literature, language, blah, blah, relationships. Okay, so radio. Let's go back to this. So here's our overview. And we know that we have understand, no do. And here are our phases. Five phases, starting with year zero to three, phase one. And let's just skip because we are high school to phase four, which is years nine and ten. So progress outcome for English by the end of year ten. Understand, know, and do. 
So those are our big ideas that I just showed you that appear in the matrix as well. So it's all tying in. I'm Rip Shit and Bust. Glanced over that. Yep, yep, yep. I want to focus on the do because that's going to relate directly to the, the concrete things that I'm doing in my classroom. I can't understand this. This doesn't appeal to me visually. I have to have things visually arranged to be able to understand them. Um, and the act of reformatting, of processing that information also helps me understand that. We know that as teachers, processing information helps students understand things and we are no different. Um, I know that for some people that's going to be fine, but for me it's not. So all I do is I go to the do and I control C, control V and put it into my own document which we will have a look at in a minute. Here we are in our document. I will link this below um, and I will also store it in our team freebie. So if you sign into the website, use the drop down menu, you get all the freebies there. And so I'll store it there. Right, here's the explanation. Um, I've added links here as well, the introduction. Links are here and also on here to get to the um, curriculum documents so that should be nice and easy for you as well as obviously they're available on the website. Here's step one. So I've taken three steps to process this information. So step one is to copy phases four and five, the do part because I'm getting straight to the pointy end uh, onto my own document. So let's have a look at that. This is the original so it's all editable so if you want to faff around with it you can. So phase four and phase five. Um, I love tables because I'm a visual person and it, I like everything laid out for me. So phase four and phase five, why am I put them together so that I can see progression, changes um, and so on, um, marry everything up. So that's why phase four and five are on the same page. I've also broken um, their elements, the four elements. I'm not actually sure what they're labelling those, but um, I'm calling them elements for now, into four rows. So broken them up. So that's really easy. Um, the other thing that I have done is I have put in bullet points. So spread information out so that it is bullet pointed to make it more visually appealing, but also easier for me to understand and work through, you know, that um, scanning through, skimming through, whichever it is. Um, for information. Importantly, I have also put anything to do with making meaning, so that's your reading, your viewing, your listening type skills, in pink, and anything to do with um, creating meaning, so your writing, your presenting, your speaking, um, is in blue. Although there's a lot of emphasis on multimodal and we already know that things like films obviously um, are all about listening and viewing. So, so that's fine, but it's the, the general vibe of the thing, right? So that's the pink and the blue. Yellow indicates questions that I have. For example, um, here it says layout or I should um, actually zoom in a bit for you. So here it's layout or, and here it's layout and. I don't know if that's anything, but I've just picked it up. Um, here it says without intrusive errors. For phase five, there is no mention of errors at all. So I've just added that little note there for me. It's, you know, making notes as you go along. Right. Let's look at the next step. So the next step for me was reordering things. So you'll note, if we just go back to this first step, comprehending text and creating text was in the same, has been put together, pink and blue. I can't deal with that. So what I have done is I have re, I've split comprehending and creating up and I have reordered my row so that I've got all my information coming in, my creating, my making meaning is all together here, and my information out, my creating meaning is 
pull together here. I should really move this up because I am completely ignoring reading for pleasure at the moment. So let's have a look. So this is the original document here. Comprehending, critical analysis, the information in, creating, connecting through storytelling, information out. So now I've got some real order going because I've broken things up, I've got my bullet points, things are, are in a logical order for me, and I've also got this logical progression showing. So now I'm cooking on gas, right? Step through three for me is processing that information. So um, interestingly, it's written in first person, so I can, I can, I can, um, from a student's point of view, but then the rest of the talk is teacher talk. So um, I need to process that information because I can't easily understand it anyway. I have to really think about it, and I want to, to be able to just look at things really quickly and go, yep, yeah, right. So um, I have processed information and we'll look at that in a minute. So I just, again, in, in this final phase, I split everything into two pages. So I've got my information in and my information out. So I've got more room to make notes as well. I've rearranged the order of the information within each element here. I did a bit of reordering to, to help it make sense for me and I've added my own words. Some of the notes under planning, um, are to do with, um, why don't we go to the original? So some of these notes under planning are to do with my thinking, but some of them are to do with um, the, what the curriculum says as well. So here, uh, it just made sense for me to put things under a planning heading. So this is about sort of what the kids are doing, what I'm teaching them, but this is like, hey, you need to consider things like this. So I want to um, both of these are mentioned in the curriculum document, so text to consider when planning. Again, that's my own words, though. But they say cultural, historical, political, social context. Um, students also need to act on new understanding, so act on these interpretations um, to affirm or resist the text. Now, obviously, that's, so that's more down the creating meaning side, but I wanted it here. I want to keep it here because I want to see how what I'm doing here is going to flow into something. So I've just added it there and it's like, well, I'm going to have to think about how I'm going to get students to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, over here, so it's all in green because then you can see it's my own words. Um, over here, I've added a few links as well. So I've started thinking about what's my program going to look like. Um, again, planning. Um, this is the processing that students must do. As I mentioned over here, they have to act on understandings. The same thing for phase five, years 11 to 13. Uh, so I've made that note there, but I've also added a note about, well, how am I going to source these competing interpretations of texts? So that's a few a little note there, and I actually rang the ministry and talked to them about that. So that's good, and we just talked about using the student's own interpretation. So it's going to be quite a cyclical thing. You might read a text, they interpret, and, um, and then you look at those interpretations again. So um, it's, it's quite a, you know, full Monty kind of program. It's really cool. Um, so for my outgoing information, as you can see, it's still all in black, so I haven't, I haven't really done anything with this yet, but I've made a note here about what I might do because the connecting through storytelling is, a lot of that is about the collaborative sides of things it, um, as well as using techniques. So I might look at putting these two elements, these two rows together, but then dividing them again into number one, writing alone. Number two, writing alone, but with a critical friend. I love the whole critical friend concept. Um, to, so they would provide feedback. So this is my own thinking, right? So, and the other thing is writing together and I'm thinking, okay, how can I get true collaboration there? So it's easy enough to do that to generate ideas. They can work out how they'll put those ideas together, how they're going to structure it. What's the, you know, what's their audience? 
and so on. And then I'll need to think about how they're going to write together. Maybe it's a bit of writing a, a little passage each and then they all edit it and proofread that kind of thing. So that collaboration. So I'm just completely brainstorming in the dark at this stage. Um, and so same thing for these students too. Um, as I've said, I'm not dealing with this part yet. All right, so hopefully you, uh, you're welcome to, you can download that, you can use it, use edit, delete as you like. Okay, so um, I know that was a long video, but I the, the aim was to show you where you can find everything and also how it's a good idea to copy and paste that information into your own document and do some jiggery pokery with it. Um, I note that um, it is written, the correct new, the refresh curriculum for English is written in first person point of view from a student's point of view. So, um, uh, so it says I can da 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 da, but the da 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 is written in teacher speak. So you're going to have to really, if you want to be delivering you know the expectations to students you, you really need to do a bit of jiggery pokery with it anyway so in helping you understand it better it ha will help students understand it better um, so that's all good um, progression through the years there's a whole lot of uh, supporting documents there but ultimately you're going to need to think about okay so what have they come into high school with so what did year seven and eight do obviously and then um, what's year 9 going to look like, year 10, 11, 12 and 13 because phases 4 and 5, you know, group different, this group year levels together as one so you sort of got to break it up a wee bit but really that's going to look like the programs you are doing now you know what you have to teach in year 9, you know year 10, you know year 11 it's just packaged in a different way so don't overthink it, do not overthink it you are already doing a lot of this you are already doing close reading you are already studying a text um you are already getting your students to think critically in an age and year level appropriate way so that's all good um the overview look proof that i've read it um do re have a read of that obviously um the thing that's coming through for me that I really like is the idea of students knowing themselves, but then that, you know, that has the ability to um, turn into a monster in itself, you know, with arrogance and so on, and entitlement, which we don't want to foster, no we don't. So knowing themselves, but also appreciating others. So I love the way that the curriculum is really pushing students to be humble um, and also to be empathetic. So that's a cool thing uh, for me. Um, the other thing is, again, I'll reiterate the document that I've linked below, which is the one that I'm working on in the video, is, um, you know, like, that's my own unpacking. That is not ministry stuff. It's, I'm not an advisor. I just wanted to show you how I'm doing it, and I'll probably rejig it in six months, 12 months, whatever. So, um, yeah, enjoy. Good luck.